Hello, everybody. Welcome to the afternoon sessions at EuroPython 2014. My name is Stefan Diel. I'm a member of the local Python user group. And please welcome Felix Wick. He will talk about how to set up a new Python project. Please welcome. Thanks, and uh, welcome to my talk. So, as we already heard, so this will be about how to set up a new Python project. So this will be quite often an um, introductory talk, but there might also be a few interesting tweaks for uh, maybe more advanced Python users, so it might also be interesting for them. So what to do when you start a new Python project? So the first thing uh, you, you need to do is you want to start implementing, but uh, before you can start implementing, you have to set up all that stuff. So you, uh, you just have all your ideas together, you know which uh, packages you want to use and everything, but first of all, you have to do the boring stuff before you can really start coding. And uh, what you usually need first is you need an environment. So um, you might have a Python interpreter installed on your system and uh, the side packages on your system, but uh, you usually have several projects and not just one. So you need uh, some kind of tool to, uh, to manage the different projects and the different dependencies which you might have. And uh, you just need, a, let's say, project-specific environment for, your, for all your different projects. And there, uh, Virtual Env is a, is a really cool tool to do that. And uh, you can just use pip to install all your stuff there. So first uh, of all, a few words about uh, virtual env. So as I said, this is just a tool to uh, create an isolated Python environment. And what I mean with isolated is that uh, you get an own Python interpreter for each of your projects. And you get an own side packages for each of your projects. So um, the only thing you need to have to install it is uh, you uh, you just, uh, yeah, you just need to have virtual env on your, on your global, let's say, uh, global Python interpreter package. So you just install it via pip or, or the sources, and then you can create a new virtual environment by just typing in virtual env and then the name of the virtual environment. It's just as easy as that. And uh, this uh, then directly comes with, uh, with setup tools and uh, pip installed into your new, into your new virtual environment. And you can then, uh, there's a small helper script, uh, activate, which you can use uh, to just add uh, your new virtual env to your, to your path variable. So that means you can, uh, when you, when you uh, type pipe install of something else afterwards, it just gets installed to your virtual environment, for example. And to get out of it, you just type deactivate, and then you can uh, directly jump to another virtual environment if you uh, work on different projects at the same time. So this is really a uh, very good tool for that. So then a few words about pip. So you probably, all of you know it, but uh, so this is just an, uh, a tool to install and manage all your packages. And uh, it offers installation from the package index, if it's uh, local or global, uh, or source or binary distribution, so whatever you have. So, um, for example, to get, uh, to get an install, uh, the latest version of a package, in this case, I just chose the, the package pi scaffold, which you will uh, learn about in a few minutes. Uh, from the public pi pi, you just type in pip install pi scaffold. So this you have done uh, very often, I think. So, but uh, it gets more interesting if you have something like uh, uh, versions of your packages, which you, which you are, which are different in your different projects, for example. So then you can use the requirement specifiers in pip install. So, for example, here you just uh, take only versions which are higher than 0.7 or equal 0.7. So, uh, and what's even nicer is that uh, you can uh, also use uh, just a, a whole requirement file to, uh, to get all your, uh, all your dependencies in once. So you just uh, use this minus R option and you uh, do all your, uh, your requirements, you just type them in in your package, uh, in your uh, file requirements.txt, for example. So if you then afterwards uh, type in pip freeze, you see what you have installed. So in this case, uh, it's uh, just pi scaffold and a few other things. You will see it later in a short demonstration. So, okay, so now you have your, your environment, so you can really start with your project. So what, uh, what you need to do to organize it. So the first thing is you need, of course, a version control system. So this you need all the time. And um, for this talk and for the demonstration later, I just use Git because I think this is a good choice, but there are a lot of other uh, good tools also. 
So and after you have this, uh, this set up, so this is another thing which you have to do, then uh, you need a reasonable uh, directory structure and you need, of course, tests and documentation. So these are also things which you have to take care of, that you have a good folder structure for it and uh, that you have the, the right tools and so on and so on. So what is a good directory structure for it? So first of all, a few, a few words about uh, what I mean in the, uh, in the following with module and package. So module is nothing else than a, a, a file containing Python code. So something which uh, with the .py ending, for example. And a package, this is a, this is a folder uh, which uh, contains an init py file and all of uh, your other Python modules which you want to have in this package. So in this case, you have the, uh, you have the package, my package, which is uh, in a project which has the same name. So this is usually um, a good practice that you just uh, name your project after your package or vice versa. And in this my package, you have this init py file. So this just uh, does uh, in principle um, that you can uh, import all the stuff with the uh, inside of your directory structure. And you have your, your modules in which do the, the actual stuff, so your actual impl implementation in module one and module two in this case. And you might also have some pack sub packages in if you are doing different things in your package. And then in each of your sub, -pack sub packages, there is another init py file that you can import uh, all that stuff uh, afterwards properly. So this is the first step. So, and then you need the, test, the tests and the documentation. So this usually should go to separate folders, so which I just uh, call here uh, tests for the unit tests and docs for, for example, the Sphinx documentation. And uh, inside your tests, uh, tests folder, you should have another init py file. And uh, you should have all your, for each of your modules, you should have a, a separate test module, which just uh, starts with the with test underscore and then the module name. So then you have it uh, really in an ordered way and you know what belongs to what and you can start afterwards the test with, uh, for example, setup tools or whatever. So this will, you will see in a moment. So in the docs folder, you have all your uh, restructured text, uh, text files, for example. So this might be this index RST, which is the more or less uh, index HTML of Sphinx. And you might have a configuration pi and a make file if you have a Sphinx uh, set up beforehand. And there's uh, also another file uh, which is called setup.py, about uh, which I will also talk in a few minutes. So, or actually, even now. So, how is your uh, the next step? If you you have then implemented everything, have everything in order, and what you need to do then is you you want to uh, to to tell the stuff to other people. So you want to distribute it in some way. So um, how to do that? So the Python comes with a, uh, with an uh, onboard tool which is called distutils. So this uh, this is actually this. Uh, Basically, the setup pie, which I uh, which I showed you. So, uh, but there's also something uh, called setup tools, which you heard in the, uh, which is which comes with virtual env. So, which is more or less just an extension of this uh, of this tutorial. So, usually, I would just recommend to use setup tools. Then you have all this stuff inside. And there uh, might also be, you have heard, might also of distribute. So this is uh, another thing, which is uh, something in between. So this was kind of a fork of setup tools, but it's uh, more or less an older version. So um, just uh, use setup tools or these utils if you don't want uh, the additional features. Okay, then uh, if you have your package, everything in order, and you want to install it now in your virtual env, so then you, you just type in Python setup by install, and this uh, installs every, uh, everything which you have just uh, implemented into your virtual environment. And what is helpful during development is this uh, setup by develop command because then uh, there were just links created in your site packages in, uh, in your virtual environment, and this means that if you change something in your source code implementation, then uh, it directly changes the installation in the virtual environment. Otherwise, you would have to type in pip install, uh, Python setup by install again. Afterwards, you have uh, changed something. Okay, and if you want to pack it and ship it, then uh, you can just use the setup by sdist or setup by bdist commands. So this means a source distribution or a binary distribution. So uh, per default, this will be a, a zipped tarball, and for the binary distribution, this is of course dependent on the machine. So this we will also uh, see later in the demonstration. Okay, so now we have done all this stuff. So. But uh, if you want to, to ship something to somebody, then uh, you have to give it a version. Because afterwards, uh, you will then have a new version a few weeks later or a few months later. And then um, 
one was maybe one uh, 0.0, and some uh, at some time you have a 1.0 or something. So uh, you need to update that version stuff all the time. So that means you need to update the version attribute of your package or module, and um, you need to, uh, to to get the self-identification in the init pi file, and you need to update uh, an argument in this in uh, in setup pi itself. Uh, that uh, so a meta information of the setup pi that you just have the, the right name for your package and also have the, the right thing in the, for the meta information for the PyPI server, for example. And this is really cumbersome to do this manually because then uh, if you really have to do this all the time, you will forget it and then you will have to do it again. So you need something which uh, is just does this automatically for you. And what is, uh, is a cool small tool is this version year package. So this, uh, this manages just uh, the versions uh, by Git. So this means that you can uh, just do a Git tag if you want a release. So you just uh, Git tag version 0.0. And uh, afterwards, you directly have the right version number. And if you then do uh, an S dist or a B dist, then you directly have the, the version of your last Git tag. So this is really cool. It makes it really simple. Okay, so um, this would be the, let's say, ba basic behavior of, uh, of the, uh, the setup pie. And if you then want to do your tests and your documentation also with setup pie, so uh, that, uh, that comes with for the, for, uni for the unit test package, it comes on board. So you just type Python setup pie test and it runs all your tests in your test folder. If you have uh, set up your setup pie uh, correctly, it just runs them all through with unit test. Uh, so maybe you want to, to use PyTest Py instead because uh, unit test uh, is okay, but maybe you want to do coverage or something else. So then there's the possibility to have in, uh, in setup Py this uh, command class argument. So there you can just define your own command classes, let's say, where you can uh, use then PyTest instead of unit test, for example, and just run it with setup Py test. Or you want to do something like PyFlakes or whatever, so you just, uh, can just uh, do everything you want within setup, uh, setup high. And uh, what is um, a quite good thing to do, for example, is to run the documentation by it. So you overwrite your command, this command class thing, and uh, then you can, for example, do setup high docs, and you just run your documentation with, uh, with setup high itself. Otherwise, you would have to type in all the type make HTML, HTML or something like that. Okay, so now I have talked a lot about setup pi, so you'll see a, a bit of this uh, boring code now. So um, in this case, I just uh, imported from setup tools the setup function, which is uh, basically what is in there, and uh, a small uh, helping function find packages. And uh, what is really the, the basic of this, of this uh, setup function is the, the name and the version. So this is uh, also what your package will be called afterwards. So your tarball, for example, if you do an S test. And you need to, uh, to tell them uh, via packages what has to be included in the distribution. So, and there you can, for, for example, use this find packages where you include everything, but just exclude the tests folders, for example. And this install requires, this is, uh, this is uh, testing in beforehand, before you install your package, if all the stuff is already there, and if it's not there, it would install it afterwards uh, via the easy install. But uh, as we have already done it beforehand with, uh, with our pip requirements file, we can also, um, uh, at this position, just use the requirements file, for example, and we have it also again in one, uh, in one place. This you will also see later. So the test suit. This is uh, just the tests which uh, need to be run by, the, by our setup by test uh, command, as we have already seen. And uh, what is a nice uh, functionality is this entry points. So there, uh, in, this, uh, in our package, my package, which we had before, there was this module one, and inside this module one, there might be a function run, and this function run gets maybe some arguments, and you can just, if you, uh, if you uh, um, set it up this way, you can just afterwards in the, uh, on the command line type run, and then the options of this, and then you just run this function through. So this is an uh, interesting thing if you, for example, want to start a web server or whatever, just via your... Uh, via this entry point. Okay, so to, uh, to set up uh, a Python project, you, uh, you need to do quite a few things. So you need to uh, think about a good project structure. You have to set up a, a Git repository or something, uh, or another version control system. You have to uh, 
to do all the tweaks with your setup pie. So there are a lot of a lot more commands than the, the ones I've shown you. Uh, you have to take care of the versioning and everything. So all this stuff is uh, is pretty, um, let's say, tough if you if you are a new Python user or at least boring if you uh, if you are experienced. So you don't want to do this all the time again. So um, there, um, this was the case also for us when we uh, when we did this over and over again for small projects. So this was why we just implemented a small tool, which is called Py, uh, Py Scaffold, which just does this for you. So you can just install it via PyPI. So pip install Py Scaffold, and the sources are available on GitHub. So and it only requires virtual env and, uh, and git to be installed on your system. And uh, setting up a project is then just as simple as uh, put up my project afterwards, and then you will have everything. So uh, now I just give you a small, a short demonstration. So let's say we, uh, we want to have a virtual environment first. So, already done. So, now we have a virtual environment in our directory. So, we saw that we have to, to uh, activate it. So, now it's activated. It changed uh, uh, the prompt, which you, uh, which you also saw on the slides. So, now what do we want to do? We want to just install by scaffold. And if the network works, this will do it. Okay, done. So check what we have inside our virtual environment. So the PyScaffold is there in the version 0.7 at the moment. So now we uh, need a new project. So just put it up, already done. So then we have our project folder, my project. Inside there we have now, um, for example, uh, this setup Py. We have the, the uh, project folder, my project. We have our tests folder and our documentation folder. So, for example, we look into tests. There's only the init pi in, also in my project. So there's uh, there's another thing, this version and version year pi. This comes from version year, so don't have to go into details about that. So you don't need to care about it usually. So and then we have this uh, requirements file, for example. So there you could now put all your requirements. For example, um, there would be a numpy or scipy requirement. And uh, this manifest in is also something which you which you might know. This is about uh, Estes, so this is a kind of a template file where you can uh, just include um, what you want to include in your source distribution. And uh, what is good practice is to have something like a README here, so which you could also uh, use then in your um, <clears throat> uh, as meta information in your setup pi, for example, to have this uh, directly on uh, on PyPI. And um, now let's see what we wanted to do. We wanted to imp uh, install it. So already done. So our uh, version was uh, was unknown for the moment. So we might uh, tag now a first version. So which might be version 0.1, and we call it. First or something. So then, uh, if you look to uh, to Git K, then you see oh, you see al almost nothing. But there's now a new a new tag in there, and uh, so now we could, for example, do a Python setup pi estist. So and now we have uh, a folder dist in here, and here uh, we have now our our. Uh, our tarball, so this is my project uh, 0.1 tar cheat set. So this is now the uh, the version which it gets from version near via this uh, this git tag and the name which we gave in uh, in our setup pi. So let's have a look uh, in the uh, in the setup pi shortly so that you see what's actually happening there. So uh, you need you. Uh, we didn't need to, uh, to do anything uh, of this by our own. It just uh, took uh, fill all the meta information which we have there, use this command class, and uh, also has the, the this docs and setup uh, docs and tests thing um, already configured. So, yeah. Basically, what else we wanted to do? So we wanted to have maybe something like an B dist also that you see this this too. So this is then in, in dist another 
uh, another tarball which is uh, dependent on the on your machine. And if we want to run now, for example, the test, so um, this is as easy as that. So as we has no test, also the coverage is perfect. So, and um, if we want to now to run, uh, for example, this doxing, so here we see this will fail because we have no not Im installed uh, Sphinx up to now. This is the only thing which you which you would then need to do. Oops. This way. So done. And this will then just build your documentation. Takes a moment. So then uh, we have everything in our docs file, for example. So if we now want to to have a look how this would, uh, oops. would look like. So just close this and look into here. So we have uh, our, our project and have the, uh, the stocks folder and then it comes into the, the HTML, and there you have then just your index HTML, and you see your your documentation, for example, which we which we just wrote. So this is now more or less uh, the module reference and what you uh, what you could have in your in your README txt. So and that's basically it. So yeah, as. Uh, As you want to know more, so you can now, uh, of course, uh, ask now, or you just come to our uh, to our booth afterwards, and then we can discuss everything. Thanks a lot for the talk. Are there any questions? Yeah, please come forward to the microphone so everybody can hear. Thanks. Uh, what about the wheel packaging? Yeah, the wheel packaging you could just do with uh, with set up high uh, beatest wheel, for example, and then you have directly the uh, the wheel there. So usually wheel is a is a good thing to do. So we can uh, just just do it. So um, this you would. Do something like that. Oh, you need to, of course, install wheel beforehand. No? Okay, not a good choice, this question. <laughs> That's why I'm asking. It's always missing. Like, it's the new cool format, and um, it's somehow not adopted so far. No, you can, uh, you can do it. It's... Uh... Sorry? Ah, uh, good thing to do, yeah. Mm, let's see. Of course, we need to do that first. And then we can do it, and then uh, we also have it as wheel in our, in our dist. Thank you. <laughs> Are there any more questions? Okay, thanks a lot. And